It's like I have my, my relentless passion for going all in and doing whatever I can. I didn't have anything to offer MTV besides just energy and passion. I'm like, how can I stand out? How can I get different? How can I be different, but still true to who I am? And yeah, I was a little bit out of the comfort zone, standing outside with my shirt off. It felt cool to get the attention because I know I look good, but what am I doing with it? And how am I, what am I doing with it? I don't know, but I want to be on MTV. Turns out MTV just wasn't live that day, so I had to adapt. We walked around New York City, just handed out shirts, meeting people, took that footage, and then kind of like used it to like get me on MTV a year later. Anthony from 2003's True Life, I Want a Perfect Body was fanatical about everything from the neck down. Don't I have striations in my ass, bro? I'm not lean. When we first met Anthony, he was fine tuning his physique as he trained to become a professional bodybuilder. But it was Anthony's pre-competition ritual that left his tidy whities and our jaws on the floor. Dad, don't fall asleep. You gotta shave my ass. I'll fall asleep. You gotta shave his ass. I think it's over, huh? 25. I'm still here. Looking at his toity. Yeah, I know. I gotta be sick, but who else is gonna do it? Now, if that's not father and son bonding, we're not sure what is. Ten years after Anthony bared his heart, soul, and posterior to us, we met up with him and discovered that his unusual shaving ritual is still a family affair. Stop moving. Last time you saw me on True Life, my dad was shaving my butt. And now, ten years later, I, I, I recruited a beautiful ass shaver, um, my wife. I gotta shave your ass now. <laughs> Some of the goals that I had 10 years ago was to turn pro, and I did that in 2008. Don't I have striations in my ass, bro? I'm not lean. I am happy to say I finally have the striations in my ass, and I'm pretty excited to display them. 2009, I placed fifth in the Mr. Universe. 2010, I came back and placed second, and now I'm training for the largest drug-free competition of the year. Also, I became a personal trainer and started my own business. My workouts are short, powerful, intense, and effective. I still get emails and how people were inspired by my appearance on True Life. That stuff really means a lot, that I can have that kind of impact on others. Five more, then you're doing 10 step-ups. The feeling I had being on MTV and the feeling I had of turning pro is priceless. 9-11 uh, happened in September of 2001. 2002 is when I stood outside in front of MTV and did a whole kind of, you know, you know day of, of, of marketing, buzz marketing, guerrilla marketing, craziness, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And then a year later, April 23, they called me up, 2003, and said, hey, we're doing this MTV uh, True Life series, I Want the Perfect Body, would you, be, would you want to be a part of it? My vision, Again, was that day was gonna be the day. Turns out MTV just wasn't live that day, so I had to adapt. We walked around New York City, just handed out shirts, meeting people. It ended up being a really cool day. I learned a lot from it, took that footage, and then kind of like used it to like get me on MTV a year later. They Done. saw your tape? How'd they find you? Did they uh, say emails. You? Okay, you kept reaching out to them? Kept reaching out to them. I don't know if they saw the tape. I don't even know if they saw it. All that footage, I don't know if they saw it. It's cool for us to kind of look at and document, but who knows if they even saw it. They should see it. We're gonna take the fuck out of them now and they're gonna see it. <laughs> because that's, that's, that's part of the journey. And now here we are in 2019, I'm looking at what we created. 2013, they came out and they were like, hey, your, your moment was, you know, you know, most memorable moment on True Life. And it, was, it wasn't by accident. I knew that if my dad shaved my ass, which he normally would do during a competition. Funny, but not compared to my dad shaving my ass. The number one most funny moment of true life history of all time. Yes, my dad performing a little landscaping of the ass. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> Did I know that MTV was gonna wanna capture it and put it on, M and put it on MTV and create a little bit of a, you know, a buzz? Of course, that's reality TV. 2003, they did the episode. In 2004, they came, they emailed me, they contacted me and say, hey, your episode was one of the top three of this and it was also the, the most memorable moment here and they created these categories, we want you to host. Now I was like, fuck, you want me to host now? Yo, I'm hosting something on MTV. I, my, like my, the, the, the car pulled up in front of my house that day, they picked me up, put me in a car, got me to MTV Studios, I was like, yo, man, woo! 
All that shit, all that fucking, you know, believing yourself when nobody else did, all that bullshit. My parents and everybody friends thought I was fucking bananas crazy, especially after that MTV thing I did standing outside in front of New York City. My uncle's like, what do you think's gonna happen? MTV's just gonna shut down and say, oh, Anthony Minetti's here. I'm like, yeah, yeah. A little overconfident, but I believed in it. I'm like, Ma, just watch out the window. It's fucking six o'clock in the morning, there's a car gonna be pulling up. I'm going to MTV Studios, I'm being a host today. And it was like this kind of evolution, like, holy shit, it's really happening. Now, don't get me wrong, I got a little overconfident and I stopped feeding the fire. So like my life drifted away, but then I was like, oh, I have a passion now. I had this tool, this gift, bodybuilding, fitness, nutrition, coaching people comes natural to me. I could use that as a career and take it to the next level and give my gift back because it's something that just becomes very natural to me. Things that I do here, things that we do here, it's just common principles for me. Some people don't get that. So I can help them become the best version of themselves. And that's how we started this. Very natural and authentic and real to who I am anyway. MTV was a platform to bring me to mass, mass amount of people. And after they did the MTV thing, after I did the hosting thing, after they called me back in 2013, they came to our other studio, which was one third of this. And they did a little documentary because it was 10 year anniversary and I was one of the main characters in that. So that was still a huge honor. Like damn, I'm doing something that I love and I could be like of an influence it's a no-brainer, like no fucking brainer. People don't discover that a lot in life. And they kind of go through life and just, they avoid the signs that come their way and they just focus on different things. I chose to focus on things that I believed in, that I was passionate about, and I chose to fucking go all in on it um, and be authentic to who I am. And that's a constant struggle that we deal with. But long story short, 2019, we're sitting in this studio, which is amazing. Uh, it's a community of people inspiring people. And I've learned a lot throughout the way, man. Um, yeah, just what it comes down to is believing in yourself, trusting the process, and practicing patience because you can have, do, and be anything you want to be as long as you believe in yourself.